and I'll, I think I'll, I can show easily that the cost of uh, production of coal, of, of electricity from biomass, is indeed cheaper. It's, of course, more expensive than coal, but cheaper than the other sources. So these are some of the advantages of using biomass. It reduces significantly SOx, simply because there is no sulfur in soil. And if there is, we don't use the biomass from there. Uh, as, it, as it turned out from our experiments, it reduces NOx significantly by a factor of two without doing any cleaning at all. More or less the same CO, much, much, much less uh, particulates. No mercury at all. Again, if the soil has mercury, we don't use the biomass from there, right? And, uh, and the most important thing, if we can sustain the growth of biomass, then we have really renewable, almost no CO2 emission, almost. Oh, well, there is, there is a little bit of CO2 because you have to do some transportation. So in Europe, they got that about 15 years ago. And they decided to uh, fire uh, biomass in coal-fired power plants. And that's what they started to do. And um, that's for real. And in Europe, there are now um, many uh, power plants that are co-firing biomass with coal. Expensive, but less expensive than the others, even in Germany, that they are so um, good in uh, uh, solar. And uh, when you see how it is done, we have coal, we have biomass, and uh, we burn. And then we start to see that there are problems, problems, problems. There are problems with the uh, SCR, with the electrostatic precipitator, with the FG, FGD, with the stability of the, um, the flames within the combustion chamber. We need entirely different conveyors, milling, storage, safety, and so on and so forth. So they realized after operating for four, five to ten years in Europe that biomass is good but it's also very, very difficult, very difficult in terms of operability in a power plant. Lots of money has spent there. So uh, this, is, uh, this is really just to give you a flavor of why biomass is not really that good by direct co-firing with coal or in lieu of coal. And uh, there are other uh, problems that are uh, hindering the biomass, there is, it's a huge bulk volume, low density, lots of water that we have to transport from place to place, low calorific value, meaning high uh, transportation cost. The material, when it stays uh, out there, it'll absorb lots of water because it's, uh, hydro, it's hydrophilic, really, and there are, as I mentioned, combustion instability, lots of tars that are uh, even causing more combustion instabilities, and uh, some other uh, problems, and, and, and there is huge variability in the various biomass types. So biomass, as it is, raw biomass, is not really a good solution. And the, and the Europeans, although they were very eager um, to work with it, and they spent a lot of money, that they uh, realized that about 10 years ago, and they started to change direction, and they are very advanced in now imitating nature. So what nature does is to take biomass and to put it 200 million years, right? A little, little, little bit of pressure, no oxygen, and we have coal. Now we can't wait 200 million years, right? We don't have that time. We have 10, 20 minutes maybe. So, <laughs> so um, the whole idea really is to imitate nature, but not the same way that nature is doing it, but to produce synthetic clean coal. Clean because it is coming from biomass. That's why it's clean. But it is really coal. I have studied in my life 30 years, like maybe 100 different type of coals, which means that we really can, and, and where are they coming from? All of them from biomass, which means that we can tailor, we can customize whatever coal we need, because that's what nature did. If nature did that, we can do it technologically, and that's a whole point.